So, you want to be the best? So does everybody else. See, it takes more than wanting it. You gotta show up. And when you show up and camp here, you'll be ready to compete anywhere. You may think you've done it all in Florida, but until you've done Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, and Longboat Key, you just haven't experienced Florida at its most relaxed, exciting, laid back, and memorable. Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, Longboat Key. Island. It's the real, authentic Florida. Plan online at BradentonGulfIslands.com. Good afternoon and welcome to IMG Academy for the Suncoast Pro Classic presented by the Bradenton Area Convention Bureau. Ryan Sudol and Lee Godfrey getting ready to open USL preseason between the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Fans have traveled not too far to come down today. Uh, taking on FC Cincinnati, Lee, a rematch of the 2017 Eastern Conference uh, quarterfinals, one that saw the Tampa Bay Rowdies uh, win three nothing at home at Outlang Stadium, which is just about a half hour from where we are now. But uh, some of the Cincinnati players probably have a little bit of revenge on the mind as well. Yeah, they will, Ryan. Obviously, this is going to be an excellent matchup today. I know it's preseason and we're all looking forward to the new year, but for two teams that have only played each other four times in their history, in the new history, uh, they already have a pretty good rivalry going, going back to the U.S. Open Cup a few years ago in which the Rowdies won at Allang Stadium. Uh, they drew in USL regular season uh, in Cincinnati regular season. The Rowdies won uh, in early July, really ending their, their winless streak that they had for a very long time, so that got them back into the good. And, and then, of course, the playoff matchup. And then you have all the MLS uh, aspirations as well that of the field the competition between these two teams and as of right now Cincinnati knows they have the upper hand as they are in for the the first two expansion teams as far as MLS is concerned and the Tampa Bay Rowdies did not make the cut so uh, a lot going on between these two teams and we will have two totally different sets of nine players or 11 players for the 90 minutes uh, for the first half your starters for the Rowdies in goal a new acquisition but an old Rowdy Cody Mizell Defenders, David Najem, Max Lakowicki, a new addition, Tamika McCandaweary, Ivan, Ivan Magalice. In the midfield, it will be Junior Flemings, Leo Fernandez, Martin Vingard, Michael Nanshoff, Joe Cole, and then up top, also the former Rochester Rhino, Rhino Jachen Graf for FC Cincinnati. Their goalkeeper will be Spencer Ritchie. He's on loan from the Vancouver Whitecaps. We we'll also have Forrest Lasso, Nazmi Albadawi, Kenny Walker, Danny Kunick, Corbin Bone, Blake Smith, Patty Barrett, Justin Hoyt, Emmanuel Ledesma, and Daniel Haber. And now with our first free kick, looks to be Michael Nanchoff standing just outside of the 18-yard box. Certainly a fast pace start to this game. Ryan, and Nanchoff looking to get this into the box. A lot of bodies at the top of the six. Swings that towards the far post. And nobody there to receive it. And important to mention those of you that are not here in Bradenton and IMG Academy. The wind has switched from where it was. Now we're in, did play a, uh, a big problem in the uh, New England Revolution and Malmo match that was on Wednesday afternoon. Difference in about 30 yards if the ball gets up into the air. So Tampa will have the throw in. That is David Najem. Brother Adam currently playing for the Philadelphia Union. And you'll be able to see then face off against each other at the Suncoast Invitational, which will take place next Saturday and the following Saturday at Al Lang Stadium.
more information and tickets, you can go to rowdysoccer.com. Season is obviously a new starting goalkeeper uh, as well. When you look at Matt Pickens moving on now to Nashville, uh, Mitch Hildebrandt uh, going over to Atlanta, that, uh, you know, there's a lot of storylines that way as far as Akira Fitzgerald. Uh, last season, we'll see him in the second half with my and goal the first half. Started the year with Matt Pickens being injured and did very well with clean sheets and getting the wins for the Rowdies off the start. Mitch Hildebrandt, fantastic for FC Cincinnati in their U.S. Open Cup run. Dispossessed. Nanchoff. Also important to note, Roundies fans that are wondering why Martin Vingard is wearing number 20. He has made a number change. He has worn number 32 for the past few seasons for the Roundies. And now Joachim Graf on the approach. He was off suck. New. This Blake Smith. This FC Cincinnati's second match of the preseason. They took on the New England Revolution and played them to a 1-1 draw earlier in the week. Blake Smith, who just got that touch on the ball, comes with quite a bit of experience coming to Cincinnati for the first time this year, spending time with the Montreal Impact, Miami FC, and the Indy 11 in the past. You have to excuse me, Ryan, on this broadcast. I have a Still trying to get over that little bit of a cough, and we don't have the luxury of being in a broadcast facility where I can just hit a little red button that kills the microphone. I'll do my best, but certainly not at 100% like some of these guys out on the pitch. Najum into the box, just missing the head of Graf a little high. And the wind blowing directly away from the Cincinnati goal. So shots from distance for the Rowdies in this first half. Going to have a tendency to hang up in the wind. Ryan, for the Tampa Bay Rowdies, a, a, a core of players around from last season, but again, a lot of new players as well. When I go down my lineup, one... So uh, another big bit of a turnover. The cores here, when you look at Joe Cole, uh, Marcel Schaefer, Martin Vingard, you're back, your two center backs in Neil Collins, Hunter Gorski, probably going to be the two starters at the beginning of the season. Uh, that, you know, there are a lot of question marks as far as who's going to be that starting striker uh, up top and who's going to be uh, the, the wing, wingers on each side and the left and right for the Rowdies. A lot of positions that can still be won here in preseason. Up for Vingard, now looking for Graf. Approaching the corner of the 18. Quickly closes down the attack. And when you look at the scoring, Graf could be a lot of help to the Tampa Bay Rowdies. He, I did a lot of games that involved the Rochester Rhinos last season for USL Productions, and he was a key figure for them. And the fact that they're not back, that's obviously going to be... And boots around the USL. This will be the first contest for these teams playing with the new select brand ball, also the official ball of Bundesliga this 2017-2018 season. And the switch from Nike, which they have had the past few years. That would be interesting this year. Mike Stewart Campbell is going to have to play probably a couple times against his ex-assistant coach now. So a great opportunity for Raul to get his first head coaching position in United Soccer. I'm sure that's true to say, 
Red Bulls, too, that saw them lose in extra time. Yeah, Junior Flemings with 16 goals and 52 appearances for New York Red Bulls, too. Going back to my point, that's what they need. They need scoring on the road specifically. They need more wins on the road if the Rowdies want to be one of the top teams in this league. Consider that Louisville City won seven road games last year. The Rowdies have only won six in their last three seasons. That's an incredible difference. It's their Achilles heel. They are solid at home. They've got a massive fan base. They are built strong at the back, and they can grind out Rowdies finished third in the Eastern Conference in the USL, their first year in the USL. And think about how much higher they would have been up. You look at Louisville getting 21 points on the road. That's just in wins, not including ties. And the Rowdies only with nine in wins on the road last season. Haber. Block. to fill that position left. I, I think that three of the four positions on the back line are solidified with Zach Bortios, Hunter Gorski, Neil Collins, and as well you've got Tamika McCann to weary at center back, but it's Darnell King leaving to go to San Antonio. Is that, that position is going to be the one that needs to be filled on the back four for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Rowdies have to be careful here. Kenny Walker with the inswinger, the wind blowing directly towards the goal. Gets under it, curling far post, a little too far. As that one, the wind will take and it'll go out for a goal kick for Mizell. And Ryan, when I get back to, to tactics of this club a lot of the year, when you look at the lineups and the way that the Rowdies play, it'll say on paper a 4-3-3, but I'd like to say more, it's a 4-1-4-1, really with a lone striker. The wingers don't get forward. Louisville City has three out-and-out -out players going forward. They've been able to score goals. They controlled a lot of their games. I think the Rowdies have to play more offensive at home and take care of business at home. Uh, their, their style sometimes fits into road ties, if that's all you want. But to be more consistent, uh, I think they. I'd like them to play a little bit more attacking style. The money that they spend on some of these players coming in here, by far probably the most money spent in the league on player salaries. Uh, that uh, you know, I, I'd like to see these guys push a little bit more and play more of an attacking style of game. Now in, chest it down. Out wide for Fleming. <laughs> Headed back towards the midfield circle, down by Ledesma. Cincy on the charge. Comes back, takes a deflection off Joe Cole. Joe Cole really did turn it up at the back end of last season. There was a, a big void as far as him setting up things through the beginning of the season, but probably uh, in most people's mind, uh, uh, the MVP of the year for the Tampa Bay Rowdies and who we'll see in the second 45 is Marcel Schaefer. Not only was his service and delivery fantastic setting up goals for the Rowdies, but uh, his goal scoring prowess. When they moved him off the back line, yes, he can play the back line, but the Rowdies did not have a good goal. able to go box to box. He showed that he still has it. He scored a couple of boomers, especially the one in Cincinnati last season and towards the end of the year. Uh, he was a one-man wrecking machine for the Rowdies, not only setting up goals, but scoring them as well. Marcel Schaefer, part of the USL Best 11 in his first season in the league. Definitely a fan favorite as well. Joe Cole was an Made the switch. Suncoast Pro Classic, FC Cincinnati, no stranger to. They've been here the last few years. They've had wins over multiple MLS clubs, including an exciting one two years ago against NYCFC that had guys like David Villa and Andrea Pirlo on the pitch when 
FC Cincinnati scored two goals in just a matter of minutes. Throw in by Najem. Nanchoff and he exchange, and that one gets away from Nanchoff. See Cincinnati, Smith getting into the top of the box. He did have uh, the Canadian Daniel Haber going out to the left-hand side, but he decided to pitch that one across the top of the 18-yard box. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit missed time there by FC Cincinnati, and the flag goes up. Mizell telling his guys to get forward. I think this is going to be a good battle to see who the starter is between Mizell and Fitzgerald. Mizell is no stranger to being a starting keeper uh, in this league, but Akira Fitzgerald did very well. And in, in you and I, Ryan, talking to uh, a couple of members uh, of the Rowdies, that they felt that you know Akira Fitzgerald is going to be a fine starter. One kind of criticism of Matt Pickens, it's the ball at his feet. He's a great save maker, he's a good communicator, but uh, that's one part of his game that might not be the strongest, where Akira Fitzgerald has got the confidence of the back line to have the ball at his feet and do a real good job with distribution. And you mentioned Matt Pickens going to Nashville SC. They will be here at the Suncoast Pro Classic taking on the Chicago Fire. That game, Wednesday the 21st. Then we'll also see another USL side and the Ottawa Fury on the 23rd. Now into the box, deflects off of Tamika McCanda Weary. And out for another corner kick. That ah, looked like Corbin Bone did a good job getting into the box, trying to get around defenders and causing a little bit of confusion for the back line. All the Rowdies could do is clear that one out and then FC Cincinnati earns that corner kick. And it will be Kenny Walker last time from this same position Sent it probably a little deeper in the box than he wanted and tracked back out for a goal kick. Wind gusting now as Walker gets under that one. And the center official saying a little too much contact in the box and that one will go back for the Rowdies. Mizell taking uh, nothing there though, not waiting for the referee to put the flag up. He came out confidently punching that one away. going to say that went off of Blake Smith and none too happy. Looks like it just grazed off of his chest and out of play. Najem with the throw. Vingard. Again, one of three players with UEFA Champions League experience on this Rowdies team along with Joe Cole and Marcel Schaefer. Yeah, and to be honest, Ryan, I don't think you can say that about three players on a team in, in Major League Soccer. To, ha to have three on a team with UEFA Champions League experience, it says a lot. And you know what? I, I'm really happy to see the dedication of these players to the Tampa Bay Rowdies. I think after they didn't get the first cut of Major League Soccer, that maybe some of them, if they had options or knew, how long would they stick around? And, and they kept uh, you know, those three players, really the core, uh, with this club to kind of build around to try to get at least a, a USL championship before they retire because now they know it's going to be uh, way too long for them to still be around if and when Tampa Bay Rowdies get Major League Soccer. And anyone that accuses America of being 
a place for retirement leagues has not seen the passion of some of these European players as far as when they don't agree with some of the officials' calls. Another foul whistled against FC Cincinnati. I like that. This, this is like a regular season game, Ryan. That, this is high intensity, and these players are going right into it like this is uh, towards the end of the season. Uh, you know, going into tackles 110%. Also, those of you watching at home, one of the benefits of being here at IMG Academy, when you have these full stadiums in MLS, and especially in Cincinnati, fans will understand with their sometimes 30,000 plus crowds at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati. Uh, one of the benefits of the Suncoast Pro Classic is you can hear a lot of the communication between the officials, uh, the coaching staff, and the players as well. Uh, not all of it's safe for broadcast, but uh, it just gives you a different look at the game that you don't normally get on a traditional game day. As Fleming's up for Groff. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ryan. You know, we have the benefit a lot of the times of going to training sessions and to be able to hear that, uh, you, you know, banter and communication between the players all the time but you know for the fans this is a, a little bit of a treat where it's not five six thousand people at Al Lang Stadium or Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati uh, where you just don't hear that communication and how they actually work as a unit on the pitch day in and day out. 19th minute of play still scoreless in Bradenton Florida just about a half hour south of the Tampa Bay area and IMG Academy one of the elite training facilities in all the world, soccer, golf, football, tennis, baseball, lacrosse, basketball, never know who you're going to run into. We all often see uh, Tim Howard on campus, Maria Sharapova. They hold an NFL uh, combine pre-workout here as well and a rookie symposium. So, And just taking a look at the facilities, every Rowdies fan that I got a chance to talk to before the game was just blown away by the IMG campus. Carl Ryan, the first year I came here was 2009 when Toronto FC was having their uh, spring training down here and none of this was here, absolutely none. There may have been five soccer pitches and that was it. None of the buildings, none of the stadiums. Uh, it has grown so much. It's absolutely uh, world class here. As Forrest Lasso puts that one out past touch. Najem finds Fleming. A little bit of contact. Swung back. Nanchoff. He is taken down and they will award that foul. <coughs> and now we're going to get a yellow for descent. And Nazmi Albadawi, fan favorite back in Indianapolis with the Indy 11, who will be joining the USL ranks this year making the move to Cincinnati. He will be the first one in the official's book. 21st minute. Well, you like to see the passion there, Ryan, but you, you don't like to see the uh, the descent after the fact. You have, especially this time of the year, you have to be a disciplined player. So from just about inside 30 yards out, Cole and Nanchoff standing over the ball. Junior Flemings is gonna have to come back a bit and offside, and there he does. Cole swings it into the box, headed away by Cincinnati. I think in, in this half, this is going to be very difficult. You do love to have the free kick in those sort of positions, but that's going, this is a strong wind here today, and that was going right into the face of Joe Cole. I'm not sure there if you just want to maybe drive one low at the feet and hope the wall jumps up and get something low and hard and driven underneath the wall as opposed to trying to, to float something up because if somebody gets a head on it, how much power are they actually going to be able to get on that header to get it on goal and, and try to be able to beat the keeper? And tapped back to Mizell. <laughs> trying to find Graf and Jachen Graf whistled offside. Some of the other new faces for the Rowdies as well. Max Lakawecki, one of two players that came over from Real Monarchs, the USL affiliate of MLS's Real Salt Lake. Your USL regular season champs 
Yeah, there was some big upsets, wasn't there, in the West in the first round of the playoffs? A bit of a shocker considering how well that they played throughout the regular season. <coughs> Going down is Ledesma, Argentinian midfielder. <coughs> Well, one of the big scoring deficits that FC Cincinnati is going to have to kind of fill the void is obviously with GB Fall not being on the team this season. Moving on to different pastures, getting out of the North American game. Andrew Wiedemann retiring, going back to school out in California. Swung towards the far post, just missing the foot of Forrest Lasso out for the corner. Yeah, Lasso's a big defender you can see the size of him there in the middle of the box and he's staying right there uh, to try to get up on something on set pieces he's one that will always come forward for FC Cincinnati this again Kenny Walker with the in swinger that one curling far post and into the hands of Mizell. Great work there by Mizell. As we talked about, it was Forrest Lasso, the big body, right in behind him, just trying to get something on that one, or else it would have been 1-0 FC Cincinnati. Confident coming off his line is Cody Mizell. And Cody Mizell was with the Rowdies a few years ago. Actually played here in IMG as a Rowdy's keeper when they played Malmo. Beautiful move. Now looking for Graf. Gets a foot to it. Now Cole settles it down. Has Najem charging. on the West Coast, especially when teams were playing uh, the Phoenix Rising FC. A little surprised by that, uh, to be honest with you, Ryan. It's, it's nice out today. It's not like it's uh, upwards of 100 degrees where we've seen it that hot before on the West Coast. Uh, you know, Phoenix Rising having to delay kickoff at times by an hour because of the heat, but they still kicked off with uh, temperatures in the high 90s, and we're we're, we're probably in the 80s here, and there's a nice breeze. It's actually beautiful weather out here. And then you got to look at the teams that play on artificial surfaces as well. And with those little uh, black rubber balls that are just beneath the turf, that even gets up to be 20 degrees higher sometimes on pitch level uh, than a natural grass stadium. I think uh, Graf is going to love being here uh, with the Rowdies this season, not having to play in some of those uh, cold evenings, wet evenings in Rochester, uh, New York, and also playing on a grass surface as opposed to the artificial surface uh, where he did with the Rochester Rhinos. Don't forget on social media, go to at Visit Bradenton. Get all your information on the Bradenton Area Convention Bureau. Always tons of events going on at IMG Academy. Every December they hold the IMG Cup, which hosts some of the biggest international academies over the years. We've had Maccabee Haifa from the Israeli Premier League. Tottenham Hotspur have won the last uh, three of the last four IMG Cups. Unfortunately, with IMG being a Under Armour Academy, when Tottenham left them uh, for their New Jersey sponsor, they did not come for the December IMG Cup this past year, but also the U.S. Men's national team, their U-17s. This used to be the home of their residency program that saw the likes of Christian Pulisic and others as well. And this Bradenton, Sarasota area, home to lots of international soccer, U.S. soccer, also down to Premier Sports Campus is now. Rowdies with a chance, approaching the top of the 18. Shot curled and just wide. 
Junior Flemings had a nice angle on it, would have completely beat Spencer Ritchie and just puts it about two feet wide. Yeah, if he gets that on goal because Cincinnati really gave him a lot of space there and they needed to step up there and close him down, but they continued to back up, back up, back up and give Junior Flemings quite a bit of space at the top of the 18-yard box. Unfortunately for him, he couldn't curl that around and get it on frame. And you see the effect of that wind as it tracks almost 70 yards. We saw that with Steve Clark the other day as the New England Revolution were taking on Malmo. A difference in about 30 yards, depending on which way your goalkeepers were kicking. A little surprised we haven't seen some attempts from distance by FC Cincinnati. Yeah, with this win, because you're not going to get it in the second 45 minutes of play. Or that is Lackawecki. With the dispossession, finds Nanchoff. Looking for Graf. No space, that is booted out by Ledesma. In the second 45, now we're going to see Marcel Schaefer. We've seen him take some from distance, and he will have the wind in the second half, and I can bet if you give him four feet in front of him and in some space, he's going to let one go. Saw him. You mentioned that Sports Center highlight against FC Cincinnati that left Mitch Hildebrandt, the former Cincinnati keeper, stunned. Graf into the box, booted away. And then also another one against New York Red Bull 2. And their last regular season victory against, or with the Rowdies. Now Flemings, again, approaches the 18, deflected around. He's going to have another opportunity. Tripped up on the downed player is that one. Into the box, punched away. And the foul whistle, the keeper down. And you can hear the displeasure from the Rowdies fans, many of the members of their supporter group, Ralph's Mob. Again, Lee, we're not going to have much uh, post-game coverage here at IMG Academy, but I know the two big major podcasts for uh, the Tampa Bay Rowdies and FC Cincinnati, the Unused Substitutes and Cincinnati Soccer Talk, they will be doing a live uh, post-match broadcast from the Shamrock Pub in Sarasota. So I know many of the fans tuning in for this will be interested to hear that. Also, I'm sure there might be a little bit of discussion about the U.S. soccer presidential election. Congratulations to Carlos, Carlos Cordero winning after the third round of voting this morning at the annual general meeting being held in Orlando today. All right, and one thing that uh, both of these clubs are looking forward to with their goals to go into Major League Soccer is going to be for the Rowdies is upgrading Alang Stadium to get it up to par. And for FC Cincinnati, they get great crowds right now at Nippert Stadium, some of the, obviously the best in the United Soccer League, but they do have plans on moving out, getting a soccer-specific stadium. But right now, the, the, the plans for it in the west end of Cincinnati, is there's a lot of opposition right now. Uh, they, they voted hands down, politicians and, and the residents of that area, unless they are part of the building process and get more involved on how this is going to benefit that area of town, they don't want to be a part of it, which I'm relatively shocked at that because if you look at any stadium uh, in Major League Soccer uh, that didn't have one uh, soccer specific and then they built one in a different area of town how that has brought, brought resurgency and life back into these areas and really uh, you know uh, made it into a really cool uh, area when you look at Sandy Utah on the break top of the 18 looking opportunity maybe sealed out. That was Leo Fernandez again starting for the Rowdies today. Again, he missed most of the 2017 season with a uh, with an injury, so it's good to see him back on the pitch and running at full speed. Mm -hmm. All I can say, going back to my point, Ryan, almost everywhere where they build soccer-specific stadiums in Major League Soccer, it's been a plus for every neighborhood around there, for sure. Some of them are, are built in the best areas. I'll give them that. Chester, Pennsylvania is kind of out there, and it's not the, the greatest area, but the whole point is to try to bring resurgence into it. Now, that area of Cincinnati, they like how they have it right now, but I guarantee you uh, that, that that will just bring a, a lot of life and excitement into the area. Now, Graf. Rowdies on the break, has Joe Cole approaching the top of the 18. 
Opportunity for the Rowdies. Cole lines one up. What a save by Spencer Ritchie. Joe Cole with his first shot on target. Trying to sneak it in under the bar. And that'll go out for a Rowdies corner kick. Good work by Joe Cole. He's getting forward quite a bit in this match, which has been great for the Rowdies. And that was a good shot to the near post. Spencer Ritchie playing the angle right, coming out and deflecting that one out. So there is no rebound, but corner kick to the Rowdies. And it is Michael Nanchoff. He will have the in-swinger. That one curling towards the box. Looks like it might have gotten the head of Tamika McCann to Weary, but just over for the goal kick. about Cincinnati Lee was uh, you mentioned the top attendance in USL not just USL but in all of American soccer <laughs> it is one of the top three or four uh, as far as total attendance for the 2017 season so uh, it's definitely a market that is is ripe for MLS consideration yeah and there's a lot of people that argue Nippert and the students there and the price that they have to pay for tickets and everything like that but uh, you know what I don't buy that if they go up to Major League Soccer the demand is there now you look at Atlanta uh, United and uh, the, the amount of people that they get at their games uh, Minnesota when they made the move up and how many they get to their games so people uh, there will be a demand there is uh, soccer is a, a popular enough sport now here in North America that uh, you get the jump up and uh, if you like they say if you build it they will come and if you get a, a solid 25 to 30 seat thousand seat soccer specific stadium uh, in those markets you're going to fill it now joe cole goes down after sealing out nazmi albadawi he was basically holding on to joe cole as he made that little 15 yard run before finally trying to get it to najem and this will be Quick free kick, Najem, chance to cross, gets one through, into the box, dummies through for Groff, that bounces away, almost! And Spencer Ritchie able to get that one back, and nice opportunity for the Rowdies the last few minutes, they have been on the front foot. Oh, that sat right at the feet of Graf, didn't it? And he didn't expect it to be there. He was shocked, and by the time he saw it sitting at his feet, he couldn't get to it. Now Flemings with the dispossession. Approaching the 18, he beats one. Up top for Nanchoff. Lines one up looking for Kraft. Booted away. And there you see the wind carry back for Mizell, and that will be a throw. And Najem going to give some time to get his players back. Cincinnati trying to increase the pressure right now as the Rowdies are in their defensive half. Gets that in for Fernandez. Back to Najem who clears it. Just miss hits it off his foot slightly and tracks out for the Cincinnati throw. was a little controversy in Cincinnati. One of their players that they signed from the NASL champion San Francisco Deltas, Tommy Heineman, had signed a contract for FC Cincinnati and then the team had let him go, listing medical conditions, saying that he wasn't fit coming into camp. So a little bit of controversy of that. And I know that Tommy Heineman camp had filed some kind of formal complaint so yeah interesting si situation there you know Tommy Heineman at this point in his career having his best days at the Ottawa Fury where he still I think remains their all-time leading goal scorer and then the Rowdies picked him up gave him a big raise and and he really couldn't fit into the type of style that the Rowdies play being that lone striker was so different moving forward for the Fury and how they played the game that it suited the big man the target man more and uh, it, he just couldn't fit into that lineup that well for the Rowdies didn't get as many starts as he would have hoped to and it's affected his game and I think and maybe his overall fitness and it, it's got to be rough for him to be able to maybe just mentally get back into it uh, and because the mental part comes first 
first. If you're not mentally into it, you're not going to get physically fit. And so it's tough for Tiny Heineman because he is, you know, having the pleasure to meet him and, and, and watch him train day in and day out. He, he did have a positive attitude, a good guy. And when he gets to be fit, he, he depending on what type of style you play tactically, he, he can be a formidable striker in this league. Again, with the loss of the big body like Jibby Fall, would have been nice to have another target man like that in Cincinnati, but we'll see how that situation unfolds. Najem in for Nanchoff. Rowdy's wearing their new 2018 preseason training kits. They expect to debut a different colored one next week when they open up the Suncoast Invitational at Al Lang Stadium. Welcoming the likes of the Philadelphia Union, Montreal Impact, New York City FC. Just to name a few. And always a great place if you're a soccer fan to be in the Tampa Bay area. Just with all the preseason action that we get to see. We mentioned we got to see the Swedish champions, uh, Malmo FF. That one looking for Graf in the box. Heads up into the wind. Fleming's opportunity maybe from distance. Tries to sneak it through. And Lakaweki wanted a piece of that one. And I believe that was just last touched up by Patty Barrett. Yeah, I thought I thought Fleming's, like as you said, Ryan, maybe off the volley or off one bounce. And he had the space just to let that one go. He chose not to, and I think that may have slowed up Lakaweki a little bit. I think he was expecting the shot, maybe having to go for a rebound. To make him a can to weary drops back for Mizell. Yeah, and the matches we've done, Lee, there really hasn't been much stoppage time, if any. Uh, we'll see if they try and tack on that last minute for that hydration break. For the most part, it's just been 45 as Joe Cole goes down. Now whistle quick restart for the Rowdies. 40th minute of play. Still 0-0. Both teams having a good number of chances. FC Cincinnati just moments ago with that Ledesma free kick that went right into the chest of Mizell. Lemmings tries to turn, keeps it. Another shove. He's able to beat both defenders. Opportunity. Now he is taken down. and That one I think you're going to see the card, Ryan. That was a great move and a great turn by Junior Flemings. And so far in his first preseason match that a lot of people have the ability to see, he has impressed for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And that will certainly be a booking free kick opportunity here late in the first for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. I believe that was Patty Barrett, number 29, being shown the yellow on the tackle. And we'll see where Nanchoff tries to put this one. Looking far post. Almost had the head of Magalais. Cincinnati with the throw deep in their half. Daniel Haber. Cole gets it. Nice turn. Finds Fernandez. Chance into the box. A little bit of a shove. Gets through and then just cleared away. It'll be a corner kick for Tampa Bay. Good job there by Leo Fernandez. We really haven't said his name that much in this first half. Orion, but good ball control. Uh, 1v1 ball at his feet. Unlucky that he couldn't get one off, but he earns another corner kick for Michael Nanchoff. Now Nanchoff, just with the short pass to Najem. Now tries to get it, bounces away in the box. Headed out by Cincinnati. Back for McCandaweary. 
Now this one's sent deep, looking for Leo Fernandez. Kept in, and now the Rowdies, everyone except for Joachim Graf, will back off on the pressure. Since he will just trade passes along their back line. Out wide for Koenig. Corbin Bone. Now into the box. Advantage being played, that one. Back over for Koenig. Opportunity maybe for the volley headed away. Mizell's got to get back up. And the danger and crisis averted for Tampa Bay. Some good blocks there by the defenders. Not allowing that ball to get through to Cody Mizell. That will go out for a corner kick. So it really has been a high pace back and forth action, hasn't it, Ryan, here in the first 45? And I think that is obviously because uh, these players know that that's all they're going to see, at least on the rowdy side, uh, for the first half, that they can go all out in this one. And uh, they need that to be able to get back uh, into match fitness after being off for uh, the winter break. And curling towards the near post. Tries again. And back out for the corner, Cody Mizell not happy. Defending his player, Tamika McCandaweary, going down in the box and wanting yeah. a foul and not getting it. He's not happy with Forrest, Forrest Lasso, thinking that he took down the Rowdies player in the box with a, a, a foot or a boot to the back of the leg. Now the in-swinger headed away safely by Tampa Bay. Now here's a shot from distance, and that one just goes off the feet of Graf. And Graf's, corner. Graf's not happy. He did get the initial block on it, and then it went off uh, two other players before it went out for the corner kick. So he's a little bit mad at himself that that's what started to earn the corner kick. It's nice to see the passion of these players, even in this scenario, that, that, that they're mad at themselves. Now in the 45th minute, Cincinnati putting on the pressure. Joe Cole. Able to sneak through. Rowdy's with numbers. On the charge, looking for Graf. Nanchoff goes to his left to Fernandez. Graf wide open with both arms open. Yeah, Graf looking for it twice. Ryan, and I think if it was going the other direction, I think you would have seen that cross to him. With this wind, I really do think, though, that that ball just would have slowed up in the air, and he would have had to stop and wait for it anyways, taking away any pace that he had uh, going into that final third of FC Cincinnati. And that's an odd call. I believe that was Fernandez that poked the ball away, but then the follow-through took down Ledesma. As we have reached the end of 45 minutes, so maybe one more chance per side. And we saw Ledesma try to put one on target from just about five yards closer, and now he's telling everybody to get up into the box. Yeah, with this wind, you can still drive something well into the goal. You just don't want to get under it because it's so easy to get under it. It is going to go over the bar. That one looking for Lasso, tracks out for the goal kick. Yeah, good defending there by the Tampa Bay Rowdies, not allowing uh, any of the forwards or the people moving forward for Cincinnati to get inside. They kept them outside, and by the time they tried to get around, Cody Mizell had the ball. You saw the effect of the win there. Graf was about five yards back before he got completely eaten up. That one has cleared Graf, giving chase, and then finally booted away by Spencer Ritchie. And that is how the first half will end. Rowdies 0, FC Cincinnati 0. Uh, pretty exciting half. We saw a good 0-0 half uh, earlier in the weekly. And um, I think 
so far it's been a pretty even game, but we're going to see two totally different 11s in the second half. Yeah, I think it was a good first 45. I think box to box it was very exciting. I think both teams will be a little bit disappointed that they didn't really test either keeper a little bit more. I think the best chance uh, lied to Joe Cole, who had a good shot early on, but certainly a high-paced half. I think that both sides are going to be happy with the pace of it this early in preseason moving forward. Now some work to be in hand. You see the players basically acting like it's the end of a 90-minute uh, game right now. Uh, but we will step aside. We'll have a 15-minute break in the new rosters for you. That's my broadcast partner, Lee Godfrey. I'm Ryan Sudal. We'll see you in 15 minutes. You are watching the Suncoast Pro Classic presented by the Bradenton Area Convention Bureau. you've done it all in Florida, but until you've done Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, and Longboat Key, you just haven't experienced Florida at its most relaxed, exciting, laid back, and memorable. Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, Longboat Key. It's the real, authentic Florida. Plan online at BradentonGulfIslands.com. So, you want to be the best? So does everybody else. See, it takes more than wanting it. You got to show up. And when you show up and camp here, you'll be ready to compete anywhere. you've done it all in Florida, but until you've done Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, and Longboat Key, you just haven't experienced Florida at its most relaxed, exciting, laid back, and memorable. Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, Longboat Key. It's the real, authentic Florida. Plan online at BradentonGulfIslands.com. We rise every morning with the promise of today, waking our tired muscles, focusing our restless minds. The echoes of those before us ring across the courts, blow across these fields. This is our sanctuary, a place where legends are made, where we rise up to every challenge, learn from every fall, step out of our comfort zone. Because the only comfort we know is filled with sweat and the scent of victory. So today, like every other, we press on, pushing the limits, defining what it means to be competitive. We'll let you in on a little secret. We can never reach our potential. Then what? We're done? No. What may be our limit today will be surpassed tomorrow. Again, and again, and again. And when our body needs rest, we service the mind, the engine, that helps us outsmart, outplay, outlast. Innovation gives us that edge. Vision charts a course for our future. It's not about chasing dreams or some imaginary sense of control. The only control we really have is how hard we try to learn, to persevere, to win. 
True champions are as competitive in the classroom as they are on the field or court, and they'll pursue a worthy cause with as much heart as they leave in the arena, because they know service strengthens more than the spirit. When the difference between good and great comes down to a tenth of a second, unwavering focus, or endless endurance, well, that's what we're all about. That's why we rise every morning, knowing there are no limits to greatness. Limits are for speed signs, not leaders, not champions, not us. We are students. We are athletes. We are leaders. We are IMG. Michael was born Michael Tucker Cormack on May 25th, 1998. Um, he was seven pounds, six ounces, and he was born here in Florida in Clearwater. I've been playing soccer since I was about four. I started in like a very small rec league that was a local club of ours, and I've just grown up from there and gone to different clubs, and I wound up here. He didn't let his height or lack thereof affect his the way he wanted to, you know, go through life at that point. He, he really wanted to play whatever he did fearlessly, and he did. I played for Clearwater, and I was about a 12, and my dad one day told me, oh, you're gonna go to IMG, and you're gonna have a tryout, and I didn't really know what that meant, and I came here, and I saw all the facilities and all the people, and I sort of when it hit me, I was like, oh, maybe I can go college for this, maybe something else could happen of it, but when the day I came here, that's when it really hit me that maybe something could happen. Well, it was a pretty easy decision once we came here, you know, and toured the facility and, and then saw all the wonderful things and everything it had to offer. Um, and we kind of made the decision right away. We come from a middle class family, uh, and, but we work hard and we work hard for our kids. And this is something our son wanted, something he needed. But most of all, it was more important for him to showcase his abilities. If I wasn't at IMG getting help from uh, the soccer side coaches as well as Ms. Von Segrin and the college, co college counselors, maybe I wouldn't be committed, maybe I'd be doing something else. I don't really have those answers because I decided to make a difference in my life and come here. And when we went to West Virginia and we uh, took a ride around with the assistant coach, Scotty, and uh, Michael took a look at everything, I can see that his eyes were popping. Michael is very old fashioned um, and West Virginia comes from that style. We went in to see the head coach, and the head coach said, why, why do you think I should take you? And Michael's words 
without even a smile, he said to him, because I can make your team better. Pretty exciting, like, but it's sort of sad at the same time because this is like my home now. I've been here for five years, go doing my everyday routine at a different, whether it's a university or just a different place, is going to feel a little weird at first just because it's not IMG, but it's definitely exciting. It's going to happen some point in my life, so I'm really privileged and honored to be going to such a university, and I'm very excited. So incredibly proud of him, you know, and everything that he's accomplished all these years here, especially. Um, yeah, it's a big achievement. My actions will represent my past as well as my family name, so anything I do from here on out will technically be representing IMD and will represent myself. So I'm just going to try and stay on my course and do as best as I can. So, you want to be the best? So does everybody else. See, it takes more than wanting it. You gotta show up. And when you show up and camp here, you'll be ready to compete anywhere. You've done it all in Florida, but until you've done Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, and Longboat Key, you just haven't experienced Florida at its most relaxed, exciting, laid back, and memorable. Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, Longboat Key. It's the real, authentic Florida. Plan online at BradentonGulfIslands.com.
IMG Academy, the Suncoast Pro Classic, brought to you by the Bradenton Area Convention Bureau, Ryan Sudall and Lee Gottfried, getting ready to bring you 45 new minutes of USL preseason soccer, Tampa Bay Rowdies, FC Cincinnati. Cincinnati fans, uh, unfortunately for you guys, there are a couple of unnamed trialists that we apologize. We do not have their names from the coaching staff. You're starting 11 for the Rowdies in the second 45 minutes for you in just a second as we start out. Again, it's been a good mixture, Lee, of uh, some of the newer players as well as um, some of the old veteran players for the Rowdies as well. In, in goal will now be Akira Fitzgerald. We'll see Kyle Karinga, Neil Collins, Zach Portillos, Hunter Gorski, Marcel Schaefer, Alex Morell, Jack Blake, Georgie Kristoff, Sebastian Guenzani, and the lone trialist on the pitch for the Rowdies right now, Gabe Kellum, wearing number 24. Yeah, you are right, Ryan. It's an interesting mix. Really two different 45 minutes of play. It's interesting to see what we think Stuart Campbell's strategy is for the Tampa Bay Rowdies in the second 45. Is Kyle Karinga going to be that new right back? Because uh, I think we can uh, foresee that Gorski and Collins and Portillos are going to uh, more than likely be your starting back three of the back four on day one. Uh, Gorski certainly and Collins were a staple throughout the season and once Portillos uh, got back to uh, being healthy and fit uh, you know he's had a rough last two previous seasons uh, uh, with injuries uh, that he really is, is coming into his own again so great for him to, to battle back and get back in that starting 11. And then for Cincinnati in goal will be Evan Newton, also on Matt Boehner, Russell Ciceroni, Deco Kanan, Garrett Halfhill, Sem DeVitt. Hit down in the box, a shot goes off an arm, but it was Deco Kanan. He had his arm tucked in, and now Marcel Schaefer pleading his case. And Rowdies then will send that back to Akira Fitzgerald. Akira, the backup keeper for the Rowdies last year, but uh, registered a lot of clean sheets when Matt Pickens went down early in the season with a knock. So, Roundies fans definitely feel uh, comfortable with Akira Fitzgerald in goal. Yeah, he's a smaller keeper, but he's very mobile, and he does, like we said, uh, we've, I've talked to other uh, members uh, on the Rowdies and talked about, like this right now, the ability with the ball at his feet and to be able to play back to him, play it out to the defenders with confidence. That's another dynamic uh, that maybe Matt Pickens didn't really bring, is that they have a much more confidence playing the ball out of the back with Akira Fitzgerald, where Matt Pickens was really just, he'd get up there and launch the ball up the field. Back to Schaefer. Looking for Portillo's on the charge. Ops to go to his right. Alex Morell, one of the speedier players, loves to make these runs toward the end line. Gets the cross up, but it goes just out past touch for the goal kick. Yeah, Alex Morell has been a real bright spot, a young up-and-coming player uh, for this side. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of surprised in the offseason that he might not have, or that he didn't explore maybe more options. I'm sure that he's going to get a lot of looks through MLS clubs with his speed and his determination. And when he won the winning spot on the club, he, he week in and week out, he was making uh, USL teams of the week because of that ability and determination and that speed that he can run at players 1v1 and really win a lot of those battles. Battles. Morell also had a brief stint with the Chicago Fire. Again, mentioned they'll be playing on Valentine's Day here against the Montreal Impact. I believe that broadcast set for 7 o'clock here from IMG Academy. So <laughs> stay tuned to all the team Twitters as well as IMG Academy for streaming details. It will be myself and Lee Godfrey back on the call as well. Thank you guys for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. And the one player that we will not see for Tampa Bay today is Lance Roseboom. He's also no stranger to Bradenton. Last year with the Ottawa Fury here at the Suncoast Pro Classic, got a red card after a VAR ruling. So that was one of our first experiences with VAR. We are not using it here at IMG this year. And Kyle Porter, the former member of the Rowdies last season, has gone back 
to the Ottawa Fury this season. You know, it might have been a smart move. We'd see his Jeep in the parking lot, and he still had his Ontario plates. And, uh, you know, maybe he saw that coming, that he didn't change his plates over to Florida. He just kept them Canadian. He can go right back up to Ontario and play for uh, now general manager of the club is now Julian DeGuzman, who took over the coaching reins after Paul Daglish left the club. And then Julian moving up into that GM role now. And again, you see the effect of the wind on that one as Evan Newton gets under. This will be a throw in for Portillos and the Rowdies back to Neil Collins. Definitely one of the more colorful of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Lee, you and I got an opportunity to golf with him a few weeks back. Yeah, an ultimate professional too, you know, down to earth. Loves moving his family here. They've been coming down here for years before he signed, uh, vacationing with his family and owning a place to, uh, down south uh, towards Siesta Key. And uh, so he loves it here. And uh, this is a, uh, not just a move as a player, but a move as a family. Uh, so great guy and pr pretty good golfer as well. Now Jack Blake, the first look from him as he curls that one through. Blake signing just a few days ago on loan from the uh, Jacksonville Armada, who was also the 2017 NASL Young Player of the Year. No foul whistled as Morell goes down. So Jack Blake, one of those late additions, and when you look at lower division soccer right now, the North American Soccer League probably will not have a 2018 season as they just keep <laughs> filing lawsuits against the U.S. Soccer Federation. So it's been a actually a good opportunity for some of the USL teams to uh, take advantage of some of those players that uh, were looking elsewhere uh, with the uncertainty of the North American Soccer League's future. All right, on that previous play going forward for the Tampa Bay Rowdy is one player that we saw, and you're going to see it a lot this season again, getting forward into the box, into the play. It was Neil Collins a lot before Hunter... Gorsi came in and Hunter Gorsi showed he's got a lot of goal scoring prowess getting forward into those positions in the short time that he was with the Rowdies last season so they're looking for a lot more of that this season to allow him to get forward maybe drop the three at the back for a certain amount of time as long as the Rowdies have control and possession of the ball and Gorsi's fit enough to be able to get back and to be able to help his team out defensively. Hunter Gorski formerly with the New York Cosmos at one point, one of the Tampa Bay Rowdies most fierce rivals. That one, that is Kyle Karinga. Coming over from the Real Monarchs, also former teammate of Max Lakawecki. You know, when you travel that far across the country, it's always nice to have an old teammate to not make you feel like such a stranger. Although we've seen with a lot of the players that now call St. Petersburg their home, uh, it's a very easy community to get adjusted in. Yeah, it is. And it was, uh, hey, that's the same thing when I came down here, Ryan, uh, from Toronto FC and, and, and joined. Now Schaefer from distance, we expected to see that. When I joined the broadcast crew of the Tampa Bay Rowdies three years ago in 2015, Thomas Rongan was the head coach. I worked with him at Toronto FC. Galeg Busamonde and Mike on Santos were both on the Rowdies. Malcolm Phillips was the kit man since day one with Toronto FC, moved down to the Rowdies. So it was literally like Toronto FC South when I first came down here. There were so many faces, familiar faces, that it was just very easy to acclimatize to coming down uh, to, to this club and, and, and loved every moment of it. Now Collins over for Gorski. Wide for Karinga. Now Cincinnati back off on their pressure a little bit. A little too heavy for Schaefer. Are just missing. It'll be a throw in for Tampa Bay. Up for Morell. Some space. Now Karinga. 
Finds Gabe Kellum, who has room. Georgie Kristoff looked like he was onside, puts it through, but the flag is up. Looked like Georgie timed that run just perfectly. The assistant referee says otherwise. Yeah, I'm not sure about that call either. I was watching Alex Morell because he had a ton of speed going up the other side, waiting for the give and go. Instead, the ball goes to Georgie Ristov. It was an easy little flip for him, but yeah, you're right. I, when that ball got passed up, you try to quickly view where those defenders are, and they look to be right in line with Georgie, in my mind. Gerald, there's that one, and you see just the, the difference of those <coughs> kicks from going from south to north. And that one just sailing on Akira past Gabe Kellum and Georgie Kristoff. So far, it's been a fairly clean game. We've got one yellow card for a hard foul, one for Descent both against FC Cincinnati. Nazmi Albadawi back in the 21st minute. Patty Barrett in the 41st. So far, nothing for Tampa Bay as that will slide into the box. And now Newton. Taking some time off. And Kellum will come bring some pressure. And Neil Collins forcing his displeasure. Yeah, you could hear that up here. He elbowed me in the face. But in fairness, Neil Collins' elbows were up at the same time. You're going to get that going into battles. And that's the tough job for those big center backs that they're going to get right in there. And for a guy of Neil Collins' size, usually on those 50-50 balls, he doesn't lose many of those. Now Lance Lang tries to curl that towards the far post, headed. And Schaefer able to clear out of the box. <coughs> on the trialist slides out wide. This one across the face, a goal and just missing. The pass from Cicerone trying to find Garrett Halfhill. Goes out for a Rowdy's throw. Very good ball across the top of the six yard box there. And there were bodies there, Ryan, to be able to get a knock on that one. And thankfully for the Rowdy's supporters here in the crowd that that just went right through everyone. No one able to get a touch on that one. Very similar to that first effort by Joe Cole in the first half. Lance Lang goes down, but it will just be a throw in. Lance Lang has had many a battle with the Tampa Bay Rowdies in the past. Back from the old NASL days as well. Now Schaefer with the interception. Rowdies with numbers. Schaefer, chance to cross in. Curling, far post, headed. Over, past Newton, and what a save by Evan Newton. Unbelievable chance for the Rowdies, and a better save. Well, it all started with Marcel Schaefer stepping up, intercepting that pass, putting the ball across to the far post, and it was headed back towards the near post, and it was a great diving save by Evan Newton just to get on that one. Looks like the jump may have been a little early in the box and it came down and still almost found a way to get in. And I'm sure once the season kicks off on St. Patrick's Day as the Rowdies go back to North Carolina to take on North Carolina FC, I'm sure you'll probably see a good mix of both 11s that we have seen today as both of them have featured first team players on both sides, but 
Yeah, there, there's a lot of depth, Ryan, and that's going to be the battle in this preseason. There's probably going to be a couple of unhappy players on the Tampa Bay Rowdies that would normally be starters on any other team uh, in this league because they do have that quality that they're going to find themselves uh, sitting on the bench. Now Portillo's looking for Schaefer. Instead goes to Guanzotti. Back for Portillo's, and they'll settle back to Neil Collins. Now Schaefer. Portillos and now Christoph. Good possession here by the Rowdies. I think we're going to see that with a, a few more trialists on the field for FC Cincinnati. And uh, there's a lot more veteran presence on the pitch right now for the men in white. And, uh, and rightly so, they should be controlling the second half, not only with the experience on the pitch, but as well having that wind advantage here uh, at IMG Academy in Bradenton. Georgie Christoph eclipsing the 100 match mark as a Tampa Bay Rowdy during the 2017 season. Always been a fan favorite. Now looking for Cicerone. And Fitzgerald dangerously off his line. Gets to back down by Halfhill. Now a chance at a cross. This one gets into the box away from one of the Cincinnati trialists. And gives Guenzotti an opportunity. Now Morell brings the ball up, has space to run, and there he goes trying to take that charge into the corner as he often does. Now Georgie Kristoff. <laughs> A few options. Back for Blake. Wide for Karinga. Rowdy's comfortable to just pass, slowly working the ball into their attacking half, has Schaefer. Schaefer tries to get that long cross through. Gwenzotti tries to find Christoph. I think Back that's one to the midfield circle. One thing we saw a lot of last year, Ryan, with the Tampa Bay Rowdies, is that they were so good of going from the top of your screen to the bottom of your screen, controlling it, moving it from left to right. Uh, and then once they got to the final third, that's where the indecisiveness came. They were always looking for that perfect play, perfect pass. I'd love to see the Tampa Bay Rowdies shoot more on target from distance. You never know if the keeper's going to make a mistake and let a bad rebound go or if you're going to earn that corner kick. But, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more directness as opposed to possession, 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 possession. Because as long as the game keeps going on, and we've seen this before, they got themselves in trouble by, you know, the other team is always in it. And you never want them to score a late goal on you. 63rd minute cuts back. This for Halfhill lines up a shot and that one sneaks by Akira Fitzgerald and puts Cincinnati on top, one nothing. Oh, Garrett Halfhill at the top of the box and he had all the time in the world. He was able to take a touch, be able to settle that ball down and no one on the Tampa Bay route, he's closing him down and he's able to just tee that one up and rocket it by Akira Fitzgerald for the first goal of this one. Uh, well played by Cincinnati. I think that the Rowdies would love to have that one back as uh, uh, there was just too much time and space at the top of the box for uh, Garrett Half 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 Halfill to be able to let that one go. Now Morell onside, into the corner. Gonna try to beat two, drops it back for Karinga. Now Blake. Finds Schaefer. Now back to the near side and Portillos. Now Guanzati tries to serve Schaefer into the box, a little too heavy and off target will go out for a goal kick. Good idea there by Guanzati. And Marcel Schaefer, from what I can see in the second half, Ryan, is playing, you know, a, a, a little bit more back than we're used to seeing him play uh, during the Rowdies' regular season. He is playing more of that, that holding mid this time, more of the what Martin Vingard plays in, in that first half. And during the regular season, we would see Martin Vingard on the pitch with 
with Marcel Schaefer and Schaefer and Cole would really be those two attacking in the center of the midfield and now we're seeing Schaefer drop back just a little bit more in this game this afternoon. Now the trialist Kellum gets ahead to it. Guanzati wins it back but possession traded inside the midfield circle. Trying that long service looking for Lance Lang. Throw in for Cincinnati. Little miscommunication sends that one out past touch for a Rowdy's throw. And Rowdy's fans that did not make the trip down to Bradenton. Don't forget the Suncoast Invitational starts next Saturday. February 17th and also the 24th the following Saturday. Be sure to get your tickets. Sign up to be a 2018 season ticket member. Visit RowdySoccer.com or call 727-222-2000. Karenga and Blake. Stay with the Rowdies. Again. Interestingly, the temperature has dropped about, I'd say almost five or 10 degrees just in the last 10 minutes or so. So we'll see if that has any effect on the players. Oh, I don't think there'll be a, a water break in this half, that's for sure. A little bit of light cloud cover. This is just beautiful. If it could be like this all the time for teams uh, in this area, they would absolutely love it where we know how it's like in the middle of the summer at Alang Stadium, uh, that the, the rains that can come in, the humidity, it's, it's a bit of an advantage from the teams coming north uh, because the Rowdies do train in that type of weather week in and week out. And we've also known the Rowdies sometimes before they head to one of those turf surfaces, sometimes get the benefit of training at the Tampa Bay Rays home, Tropicana Field trying to adjust to those different bounces that you get on those artificial surfaces. Yeah, it really is, it is a different game in a lot of those places you have to travel on the road and, and talking with some of the rowdies, they say, you know, some of the conditions is, is the reason why they don't get the road wins. I'm not necessarily 100% sure. I, I, I buy that argument. I do understand that, you know, there are tough conditions in different fields around this league, but other teams have gone in and won in those same conditions. So I think that 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 is one thing that certainly has to be uh, like i said addressed uh, this season by the rowdies they they want to be one two or three uh, in this league and uh, and have a good playoff uh, seating and you know possibly to be able to host all the games at home towards the championship and win the season have the ability to host as well now the trialist out wide for lang lang into the box lines up a shot just hits the top of it a little bit. No problem for Akira Fitzgerald. And now a huge serve over to Alex Morell. You see those long passes. You can see the veteran from Bundesliga. Morell into the box. Opportunity tries to slide one by and deflected away at the last second. I believe that was Dekel Kanan, the Israeli national. Again, we've seen Marcel have that booming pass to Alex Morell a few times and every single time even with this wind it has been on target Sam DeVitt out for Cicerone Georgie Christoff wearing the captain's armband for the second half up for Marcel <laughs> Schaefer and they will take a water break in fact and 1-0, the Cincinnati advantage in the 69th minute of play. Again, that goal coming just about six minutes ago. Garrett Halfhill from just inside the box. Looks like it may have taken a little bit of a deflection and threw Akira Fitzgerald off just a little bit. 
they see Marcel Schaefer just staying on our side of the, of the pitch. He's a little bit upset with himself right now. And you, you know that, you know, it's not even, I don't think it's that hot out here, and he doesn't either. He doesn't need that water break right now. He just wants to get right back out there and start playing again. So FC Cincinnati. Again, mentioned they had a 1-1 draw with the New England Revolution earlier in the week. They did not stream that game at the request of the New England coaching staff. Rowdies, this is their first competitive 90 minutes or 45 for uh, all the players that are getting into today's match. So, again, still some gelling. Obviously, yeah. there, there's a difference between the, the scrimmages amongst yourself at your training facility and then the first time you get uh, competition against another team, you're going to get harder tackles from yeah. the opposition and just have to find out and get that uh, – get that new movement gelling. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest part is that, yeah, you're not going into challenges and training like you are in a game scenario. Uh, you're, you don't want to hurt your, your teammates. And I think that, you know, going over and, and hearing Marcel Schaefer be upset with himself, I think that's going back to the goal, uh, Ryan, because he is playing that sweeper spot. And I think when that ball came from uh, deep uh, in the box of the Rowdies and it got cut back to the top of it, that, that really was probably where Marcel Schaefer was supposed to be. And I think that's what he's mad that he himself got caught out of position. He's mad at himself uh, for uh, Garrett uh, Halfhill to have all that time and to be able to let that shot go and score the first goal of the game. Unfortunate for Akira Fitzgerald. You know, I don't think he really, that was really the first real shot on goal. So he hadn't had to be able to, you love to kind of make that, get a good couple of touches on the ball as a keeper to give yourself that confidence feeling the ball. But that never happened and the Rowdies find themselves down. And now I wonder if the Rowdies late with the amount of talent they have on the field compared to the trialist FC Cincinnati, if they can do what we saw Malmo do the other day in the last 10 minutes being down 1-0 and then they just decided to, looks like they put it into another gear and scored those two goals, possibly could have been three goals in the last 10 minutes of play and they ended up winning that game 2-1. to one. And now there's some displeasure. And Neil Collins again <laughs> voicing his displeasure. And you could see the the passion from these European players uh, that you, you, we heard the frustration from Marcel Schaefer. We're hearing it now from Neil Collins that, you know, I, I know it's preseason, but these guys want to get these competitive minutes in and, and get back to trying to get an equalizer for the Rowdies and just. Oh, well, there may have been a, uh, may have been a, 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 a quick restroom break there Ryan by one of the players and I think that's what Neil was upset about let's get the game going they can play with 10 men until he's done his business and then get waved back on the field now Christoph looking for Kellum just about a little three minute break for that hydration so we'll see if that gets tacked on to the end DeVitt up for Cicerone Into the box, Clyde's one up, dummies through, probably should have taken the shot. And that'll yeah. give it back to the Rowdies. Good move there, Ryan, by Cicerone. He went around Zach Portillos way too easily. He got beat badly there, and it was a good ball across the top of the 18-yard box. Once again, if there's anybody moving forward, by FC Cincinnati there and gets a boot on that one, that would have been very difficult for Akira Fitzgerald. Five o'clock local time, Bradenton, Florida, on the campus of IMG Academy, the brand new soccer complex on campus, right next door to the football stadium and their Gatorade Performance Center. Thank you guys for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. One nothing FC Cincinnati, the difference in the game right now, coming back in the 63rd minute. Rowdy's determined to get back in this one. Now Portillos looking for Kristoff. That one taken back away. That stays in. And Georgie is down and holding his shin. Portillos. Yeah, and as you put as many hours in as Georgie Kristoff has as a veteran player, those, those knocks get harder and harder to take. Good to see him back up on his own power. No stoppage. To 
again, just going back to FC Cincinnati's goals, that's been a story for the Rowdies the last couple of years, how they have, they dominate games in possession. And they sometimes don't dominate on the scoreboard. Al Lang Stadium. Schaefer oh. with the cross into Hristov and heads it right into Evan Newton's hands. That was the best opportunity so far in the second half by the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Georgie Ristoff, wide open header. Maybe there was a little bit too much pace into the box on that one because he should have done better on that. If he just heads that one down towards the ground, I, I think that's an easy goal for Georgie Ristoff. Instead, he just directs it right back uh, to Evan Newton, who makes a, a quick reaction save. Only He just put his arm straight up because it was right at him. And that is something that... Helped Garner, Marcel Schaefer, <coughs> USL best 11 honors is his ability to get down and put crosses right onto the heads of attackers. Into the box for Morrell. Tries to keep it back in and just can't get the right angle, goes out for a goal kick. Now we hear some strategy being discussed between Boehner and Semdevit. Newton taking a little extra time. Collins wins that ball. In possession being traded across midfield and that is going to be a yellow card on Hunter Gorski. A little charge into the back of the trialist. Well, Ryan, interesting this year going into the season for FC Cincinnati compared to last year. Even though Alan Koch was the head coach all of last year, this is the first time he's had a full preseason bringing in FC Cincinnati into a year. Remember you and I doing a game here last year, and we were shocked that pretty much the night before the game that we were working, that John Harks was fired as the head coach or quit uh, of FC Cincinnati, and Koch had to go right into from assistant coach to head coach. So what a weird scenario that was at the beginning of last season for FC Cincinnati to compare to going into this season. They had a great season in 2016, a little bit of a disappointing letdown on their season last year. They're going to want to do better in that win category. They, I think they expect a lot more out of this club this year. Cicerone into the box. No one there to receive it. And the assistant referee a little miscommunication between the offside play. Yeah, and I know it's very cliche during preseason broadcast, Lee, but it is preseason for everybody, for the referees, the players, well, coaches, front office. It doesn't sound like the players are in preseason mode, that's for sure. They're making sure everybody's taken to task out there this afternoon. They're already on their toes. Another offside whistle. Gwenzati just a little bit behind that last trialist for FC Cincinnati. To down Karinga, able to boot that one back towards midfield. Half Hill, the lone goal scorer for FC Cincinnati. Now trying to sneak that one up for Lance Lang. Gorski able to get that one out past touch. It'll be a throw in for FC Cincinnati. Good play there by Hunter Gorski to come across and stop that play. Kyle Karinga just a little bit up the field there dealing with other issues, and Hunter Gorski recognizes that and comes across and makes a clean tackle. Nice deflection by Morrell. Rowdy's unable to keep possession. As Kyle Karinga just has to boot that one out. <laughs> Karinga again out past touch. Substitution coming in for FC Cincinnati. I believe that is Jimmy McLaughlin checking in as well as 
maybe Will Seymour. Cicerone. Schaefer fighting for possession. Now Guanzati. Back for Portillos. And Fitzgerald just sends it up. Boehner. Now has Seymour. Chance to cross for FC Cincinnati, looking for a second goal. Try and double their lead. Now Lang. Rowdy's defense very good there, Deckel Kanan. <laughs> and that is going to be a foul. I believe that was Jack Blake with the takedown and you can definitely hear the fan bias in the stands. <laughs> Displeasure with every call against that's going against the Rowdies. That one probably could have gone either way. Yeah, certainly a few members of Ralph's Mob going to be in the, the crowd tonight. The passionate fans. They're always sitting in that one stand directly behind the Rowdies goal. Fantastic supporters at Al Lang Stadium. A little under 10 minutes remaining in regulation. We're in the 81st. Now Portillos and Schaefer up for Guenzotti. Trying to break through. He is shoved down, and that is going to be a free kick for the Rowdies from a dangerous position. This one they'll have to put on target. And the wind dying down a little bit. You can still see the corner flags blowing. We'll see who's going to take this one, but... An this, ideal scoring position for Tampa Bay. It is, and this is where you really have to factor in the wind, Ryan. You, if you hit this regularly, you're putting it over the bar. So you almost have to take a little bit off of this in order to get it up and down in time because of the strength of the wind. Will it be Georgie Ristoff? We've seen Marcel Schaefer tee these up as well. Is he going to look for a space and just drive it low, or is it going to be Ristoff going up and over top of the wall? It is Schaefer and Ristoff standing over the ball. Georgie takes the opportunity and hits the bar and goes over. Nice attempt by Georgie Christoff. Unfortunately, the score will remain 1-0, but a great effort, and the Rowdies are going to hopefully piggyback off that close attempt and get some more momentum going in their favor. Yeah, and I, I, I think some of the, the Rowdies and the fans are actually questioning as well. Did Evan Newton actually get a piece of that? Did that get a piece of his hand and the bar? Should that have been a corner kick for the Tampa Bay Rowdies? Headed back, Morell. Now Gorski heads for Schaefer with some room. Has Ristoff and Portillo's making that inside overlapping run. Georgie with the cutback. Out for Schaefer. There's the cross into the box, going for it and. Off Lance Lang, Alex Morell was just a foot behind, but that will go out for a Rowdy's corner. Now that definitely was a goal-saving clearance there by Lance Lang with Morell coming right in at that back post. He was waiting to knock that. Lance Lang just got that out of the corner of his eye, turned his body and deflected that out for a corner kick. Fantastic clear by Lang, but another scoring opportunity here off the corner kick, Marcel Schaefer there to take it. And with this wind, I would not be surprised to see Marcel try to attempt to put this one on target, leaving Emmett Newton completely baffled. That one headed out. Morell tries to line up a shot, takes one too many touches, and it's cleared away by Cincinnati. Yeah, I wonder if Morell should have just tried to volley that first touch. Instead, he chested it down, and by the time he did, he was closed down. 84th minute of play. <laughs> Cicerone. Up 
for Seymour. Boehner for Cicerone. That one gets around Collins, but Akira picks it up. Jack Blake. Line for Karenga up for Morell. He's dispossessed. And Akira Fitzgerald scoops it up, and he's going to throw out wide. Has Portillos. There is some open space on the pitch on this near side. Squinzati and Kellum putting pressure on. Now the trialist goes back. Guenzati bringing the pressure. That one miss hit by Evan Newton, but kept in by Cincinnati. You see the speed of Morell, and Lance Lang goes down, and that is going to be a free kick for FC Cincinnati and a yellow card for Tampa Bay. I don't mind that, though, by Alex Morell, because... You know, I love to see players come back like that off the ball. You know he's got that speed and he's fighting. It really shows the determination to come back and help your team out defensively as opposed to just hanging up top and being a bit of a floater and a poacher. That's not Alex Morrell. He's showing that he's a two-way player and he's going to defend as well. Was he a little bit, uh, you know, a uh, too much in and engaged in that tackle. In the minds of the referees, certainly it was a bookable offense, but I like to see him get back and actually stop a goal scoring opportunity. And this is Lang that will try to curl this into the box, and it goes to Fitzgerald. And Collins, just enough body to take Deco Kanan out of the play and out for the throw. Again, the wind keeping that one from going out for the goal kick. Gets that into Georgie Christoff. Portillo's had a nice deft touch there, but it goes back to FC Cincinnati. And this will be a yellow card on Georgie Christoff. And I believe Will Seymour is knocking was, this one a bit. That was a hard knock, Ryan. You could hear that from up here, though. And the yellow card is going to come out on Georgie Ristoff. Our Rowdy's players are arguing that he got all ball. And the referee sees it the other way, sees that Georgie Ristoff was late coming into that challenge. And he's shown the yellow card, another free kick opportunity here for FC Cincinnati. Cicerone over top of the ball. You see the players moving forward to the top of the 18 yard box. This is gonna be interesting with that win to see what they can get on this after the ball set into the box. Curling towards the far post, headed away. Neil Collins gets to it. Great delivery into the box there. That did have a lot of pace on it. No one following the run into the top of the six and Neil Collins was really all alone there to clear that away safely. Heavy first touch, dangerous now as Jack Blake goes into the box and that is just cleared out of play. It'll be a throw in for the Rowdies. They need to get in that attacking mentality to try to find a late equalizer. As we enter the 89th minute of play, it'll be interesting also with it being preseason to see if they tack on that extra three minutes for that hydration break. All right, and certainly both halves have been very fast paced. This game has uh, flown by. Uh, for us up here, that's for sure. Now the trialist into the box. Gets that slide through. He'll have another opportunity to cross. A couple deflections and uh, Kira Fitzgerald will be able to scoop that up. And Georgie Kristoff telling Akira, just send it. Now they'll let Gorski bring it up. Fans right now saying attack. 
yeah, they know what time. They've got their stopwatches out as well. And how much is left in this. They know what the wind and what's going on. That this is getting down to it. 90th minute and out for a goal kick. And you can bet Evan Newton is going to take his sweet time getting back to the box. Collins again with the 50 50 ball helps get that deflected away. Schaefer plays it down to his feet. Good first touch. Poked away by Cincinnati. Guenzotti. Nice turn. Has some space. Looking for Marcel or Georgie and taken away. Now Jimmy McLaughlin trying to get around Gorski. He's looking for somebody. No one getting open for Cincinnati. And there's too much on that one. And this will be out for a goal kick. We are in first half added time. And Schaefer, plenty of room to run, making about 40 yards down the near sideline. And that's going to stay with the Rowdies. And it'll be for the throw for Zach Portillos. In for Marcel Schaefer. Now Gorski. Looking deep for Zach Portillos. Great touch. Now a chance. Portillos tries to get it into the box. Deflected away. Now Schaefer. Curls into the box. Set down, Karinga lines one up and just goes wide. Out for the goal kick, but a nice effort by Kyle Karinga. Yeah, and Guinzotti was diving in there at the last moment too to try to get a foot on that as well. So, a last gasp effort by the Tampa Bay Rowdies here. Looks like the referee is adding the hydration break time. Rowdies with an attacking mentality right now. Probably their last gasp here. Schaefer gets the touch to it. Collins over to Portillos. Schaefer up for Guanzati. Center official checking his watch. Probably about one more minute to play. Up for Christoph, onside. Gets the cross into the box, trying to find the feet of Morell. Chested down, Jack Blake into the box. Touched up, Morell, one last chance. Breaks through, cuts, tips and again wide and out for a corner kick. Last gasp for the Rowdies. See if they can pull one back at the death. It will be Jack Blake taking it from this near side corner. Wind picking up. And the Rowdies need this one. Now Blake. Under it. Curling. Far post. Headed. Tipped away and cleared out. Schaefer lines up a volley and off target. And that is how the game will end. After 90 minutes, FC Cincinnati one, Tampa Bay Rowdies zero. Yeah, not a whole lot you could tell for either team, FC Cincinnati. Uh, just getting that one goal from Garrett Halfhill back in the 63rd minute. The Rowdies had some opportunities, some good saves were made, but uh, again, for, for first match, uh, obviously you'd like to see them score a little bit more, but uh, I don't think <coughs> the coaching staff really has um, you know, really has anything to, to hold their heads down about in this first preseason contest. Oh, no, Ryan, you're absolutely right. That's what it's all about. And Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> I think it's unfortunate for Akira Fitzgerald that the only shot that he had went behind him. He didn't really have to make any big saves. And same at the other end. I think that, uh, you know, the Rowdies produced some good 
movement moving forward, but I think they would like to be a little bit more clinical going in on goal to be actually finish something that was put on target. Uh, not too many saves having to be made uh, much by Evan Newton. There was one free kick that went off the bar by Georgie Ristov. Georgie Ristov had another header that went right on to Evan Newton as well. So both opportunities at each end, very fast paced because of the wholesale changes at halftime. So I think it's going to show a lot in game scenarios. When you And then maybe at the next point in time, they'll be getting 60, 70 minutes moving forward with preseason to get people close to playing the full 90. But right now it's giving the managers the opportunity to see 45 minutes of his entire team and getting them back to match fitness. And as the Rowdies get ready for their preseason match at the Suncoast Invitational next Saturday at Al Lang Stadium, I anticipate you will probably see the coaching staff uh, change up and mix and match what we saw from uh, both 11s today. Uh, we'll see if Lance Roseboom is back up at uh, 100%. Uh, see what they do with some of the other trialists too, but it uh, should be interesting and it's uh, I think uh, Rowdies fans have a, a lot to look forward to in the 2018 season as well as FC Cincinnati fans. Yeah, certainly a lot of expectations for both of these teams. Uh, for the Rowdies, they want to win a championship for Cincinnati. They also want to be competitive, do better than they did last season. Uh, moving forward, if they are right now, I think they are the favorite to be one of the two teams selected for Major League Soccer. They want to keep moving towards that and getting expansion and moving up to the next level. Well, Lee, that'll do it for us. Our next broadcast from the Suncoast uh, Pro Classic will be Wednesday night, Valentine's Day. It'll be the Chicago Fire taking on the Montreal Impact. Uh, be a, a very fun game. We'll get an opportunity to see uh, Bastian Schweinsteiger, uh, who will be there, and also Dax McCarty and some other U.S. men's national team players uh, from up there. Again, myself and Lee will be on that broadcast 7 o'clock. I believe that game might even be over at the IMG Academy Stadium. But for everyone from the Bradenton area, Convention Bureau and Stream Sports and everyone here at IMG Academy, especially my broadcast partner, Lee Godfrey. I am Ryan Sudol saying we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Uh, if you're a Cincinnati fan, we know you enjoy the result. That will do it from us from the Suncoast Pro Classic at IMG Academy. You may think you've done it all in Florida, but until you've done Bradenton, Anna Maria Island, and Longboat Key, you just haven't experienced Florida at its most relaxed exciting, laid back, and memorable. Bradenton Anna Maria Island Longboat Key. It's the real, authentic Florida. Plan online at BradentonGulfIslands.com.